Hi, I'm Jason Sterling. This is an RM Cascadian travel vlog. And today we're going to look at the final video uh, regarding my voyage on the Carnival Vista, New Year's Eve 2021 to 2022. Today we'll look at the ship itself and an overall review of that voyage. Okay, let me start off by saying, spoiler alert, this is my favorite ship in the Carnival fleet. And the great thing this time was that she was still decorated for Christmas, as were a few of the ports of call. I'm going to splash some pictures here like normal off to the side. It was a lot of fun to see this ship decorated for Christmas. And not just the lobby. I'd been on the Conquest before at Christmas time a long time ago, and just the lobby, as I recall, was decorated. In this case, you had decorations on several different areas of the ship along the promenade, back in the Havana bar area, by the show lounges and other places. A few pictures, like I said, here to, to see that. Now, the Vista, as you can always see, also see as we go through this, is a sort of retro-modern look. The style, especially of the lobby, is a very retro modern style. I really enjoy it. I enjoy this entire ship. The ship has a decor that is very calm, more calm, more laid back, a little more, maybe a little more spa-like than theme park-like. For a long time, Carnival's had a reputation of a very phonetic type of decor, right? A lot of stuff going on, a lot of things, hitting every sense all over the place. Beginning, I would say, well, for sure with the breeze, you know, that line of ships, it got a lot calmer, got, got kind of brought down a little bit. I like that myself. I do like that. I liked the old ships, obviously. I sailed on a lot of them, but I do like this new style, which is a lot more relaxing and in some ways kind of more spa-like, a little more, a little more spa-like. Okay, so let's start with the ship itself. Now, since we're here in the lobby, let's start with with kind of bars, bars and lounges. There's a great bar here in the in the lobby, the lobby bar. In fact, it's one of my favorites. I have a couple of favorite spots on the Carnival Vista to hang out. The lobby bar is one of them. The Alchemy Bar is an is another one, and the pool bar, like the Red Frog pool bar is also another big favorite of mine. All three of those are kind of where I typically like to hang out, but there are other great bars on the ship. You have a pub, a sort of pub. You have the the Red Frog Pub, in fact, I think is what it's called in the ship. On the back, you have a beautiful, absolutely beautiful uh, Havana bar that is open to the public. Now, the pool area in the back and the bar in the back are just for the Havana room guest. But the main bar up front, where they often have live music, that is for everybody. So you can go there anytime that it's open. They also have, oh, a lounge. You know, like the show lounge has a bar. The show lounge doubles as a nightclub, as does the comedy lounge. Comedy lounge kind of doubles as a nightclub. The Vista doesn't have a true nightclub on this ship, like a, like a spot dedicated just to dancing, like a nightclub. But you've got those bars. You've got a bar at Ocean Plaza, which is a little bit smaller and kind of kind of offset a little bit. But there's a bar there as well. There's plenty of places to get a drink. Long story short, plenty of places to get a drink. You know, another place I really like, though, is the bar up on Serenity Deck. I like it mostly because of its proximity to the spa and the thermal suites. So if I want to run up there and grab, you know, a drink and then go back down, it's very close. So there's that one as well. Uh, the bars on Carnival have always been... Pretty well known as, as pretty good. Good bartenders, good service, great places to hang out. The lobby bar has a violin trio a lot of the times. That's also a common area in non-COVID times for the cruise director to have parties. Pretty rowdy parties there in the lobby. Uh, nowadays, you know, they've been relegated back, you know, pretty much out to, to the deck on deck. So they're outdoors, less chance of COVID transmission. But hopefully we'll get back to the indoor lobby parties uh, as COVID fades from the collective scene. But all of the bars have live music like the violin trio and have action going on. So you're going to see 
Ocean Plaza a lot of times might have kind of a retro band, right? And the Havana Lounge might have a little more Latin influence to it. Obviously, the pool bar, there's usually a DJ out there during the day, right? So all of these different lounges do tend to have some sort of music or entertainment going on, often live music. I would say, well, like the show lounge and the comedy lounge obviously don't. I would say those two don't. That's what's, that's what's popping into my head. Oh, and this. I used to love the casino bar. The casino bar on the Vista was my favorite. My favorite bar out of any ship, anywhere, anytime. Had a miniature funnel, only a two-deck high funnel in the middle. I love that bar. They took it out. They took it out. They said because of COVID. I guess, which I think is bullshit. I think corporations are using COVID way too much as an excuse, but they took it out. That was my other favorite bar. They took that out. That was the best one. They always had good music playing. There's always lots of action going on in the casino. Lots of people around. Lots of people coming and going. Anyway, that was my other my other bar statement for the Vista was, yeah, I loved, I loved the casino bar. Indoors also, uh, we'll, we'll go with an indoor theme here since we started with bars and lounges. We'll go with an indoor theme here. You've also got things like shopping on board. Now, it's usually the typical, it's, or it is the typical carnival shop. So you're going to have watches, sunglasses, perfume, jewelry, the carnival gift shop, you know, with carnival lo logoed merchandise. There's a sort of clothing store on there now, you know, as well. It sells pur purses and non-carnival logo kind of clothing and a liquor store, you know, <laughs> the duty-free liquor store. I don't know if they still, do they still, sell, I don't know if they still sell tobacco on board. I think they used to. Honestly, don't know. I don't know if they ever did. Something tells me they did and they don't anymore. So anyway, you've got that sort of shopping. Now, the one difference on the Vista and the Vista class is the candy store, the cherry on top has an actual ice cream counter. So you can get sort of sundaes and ice cream sandwiches and stuff there. That is an upcharge because you can get ice cream sundaes. You can get gelato and all the mixings for ice cream sundae back on Lido as well. But they have a slightly different setup there at Cherry on Top. And it's really quite good. It really is a really good, good setup. I, I like it a lot. Now, the big thing. What's the big thing on the Vista that they don't have, or the Vista class, they don't have any place else? There's there's actually two big things. But what's a really big thing? The IMAX theater. Uh, if you want a full-size IMAX theater at sea, and it is a full-size IMAX theater at sea, either the Vista or the Horizon are your, are your only choices. The Vista has a full-size IMAX. Now, I, it must not have done very well financially because... They only have it on two ships. Even the third ship in that class doesn't have an IMAX theater. So that's a shame because I really liked it. I really liked it. I don't get to see a lot of movies. And so far, every time I've been on the Vista, I've seen like two movies each time I've been there because they're showing first run. So what's in the theater at home is in the theater on the ship. Like this time I saw uh, Matrix Reloaded and the um, Spider-Man movie. I love Spider-Man. So I saw the Spider-Man movie was excellent. Both of them were excellent. Some people didn't like The Matrix. I liked it. It was fine. It was good. Nice action romp, as was Spider-Man. So the, the IMAX is a big, a big difference on the Vista. So the other big difference is outside. So we'll, we'll tackle that in a little bit. Also with the IMAX, they have a thrill theater. They have thrill theaters on the Breeze class of ships as well, which I think is a dream class. Isn't that the dream class, I think? The Thrill Theater is a sort of amusement park ride type of theater where the seats move and there's wind and water in your face and it's in 3D, you know, and you're watching like maybe a landscape or a scary one. I think they, had a, they have a selection of like scary, like horror movie ones and stuff like that. It has not been reopened since COVID. I think because people are yelling and laughing and everyone's packed in so tight together that that's part of the reason why the other part I read somewhere they were having trouble maybe getting movies for it because, you know, the move, I don't know. Anyway, it hasn't been reopened, but that's on there too. And hopefully it will get reopened soon. I hope now there's also a spa. Of course I did a spa review in a different video with the room video, I think, or maybe, maybe new year's Eve, but I did it on a different video. The spa, there's a full service spa on the Vista 
And it's pretty good. It's not bad. I like it pretty well. They have all the services. I think the services are great. Uh, the thermal suites, not as great as on the breeze, but still good. I still do it. I still like it. And I still would take a spa room on the Vista. Now, as I said, they have a show lounge and a comedy club that double as um, kind of nightclubs at night. Um, the show lounge have the typical carnival productions. So like uh, musical style reviews, right? Okay. Some people love them. Some people don't. I, I can take them or leave them. I usually don't go anymore in this day and age. I've kind of been there, done that, and seen it. This time on the Vista, because of COVID, COVID knocked out the entertainment staff, kind of. Yeah. Especially for the show lounge. So I think a lot of them had to go on quarantine, even though they were negative because they had close proximity exposure. So they had to be on quarantine for a certain number of days, even though they weren't positive. So none of those shows, none of the production shows were on for this voyage. Now, they did a sort of musical set where they did have a couple of performers singing songs from Flick, from that production show, just singing. And they brought in the Vista Rock Band, which is very good, was very good. And they brought them in to do an actual sort of concert. Like, on the stage, like a big concert. That was really cool. I really liked it. In fact, I thought it could have lasted longer. I, I don't know if that was just from for COVID or just an emergency stopgap for that voyage because there was no entertainment in the show lounge. But they were really good, and I hope they continue that and expand it, make it bigger. It was great to see what is usually a really good band, whether it's the Breeze kind of rock band or the Vista rock band, in a full-fledged, stage-wide concert. It was really cool. So that was, though, the, the comedians I didn't see this time. That was the show lounge. The comedians I didn't see this time. Now, I saw them on The Breeze in August. They're always funny. They're really good. This time I was with my son. And I told him, hey, you know, we can go to the PG-rated comedy show if you want to go see a comedy show. And he informed me of something I already know. The PG shows aren't as funny. <laughs> that it's really only funny when they're using all those bad words. And, and I was 13 once. I really was. Believe it or not, I was 13 once. And I felt the same way. Yeah, I mean, the comedians were really funny that used bad words. Those were the funny ones, right? Those are the, That was the funniest part. So we didn't go see any comedians because my son nicks the idea. He's like, nah, I don't want to go see it. But they do have really good comedians on board. And I can speak for the adult shows. They're very funny and kind of politically incorrect. So, you know, take your political action committee and your feelings off your sleeve. I have to brush mine off sometimes, too, because, I'm, you know, we, are, we all fit into a special interest group somehow, somewhere, and they all get knocked on. So just be prepared. But it was funny. My group was knocked on, and I still thought it was hilarious. So the best thing in life is laugh oneself. So I would definitely recommend checking those out the other thing now this is something my son does like and i do like the children's casino is a, is a big hit with my son and i on the ship the children's casino is what i call the arcade the video art game arcade which we don't actually play any of the video games really he loves god save me he loves the claw <laughs> you know He's always going to win at the claw. Have we ever won the claw? We have not ever won at the claw. That's why it's a casino, you guys. But he loves playing that. And the thing I really love playing myself, and he loves Sue, is ski ball. You know what they call that? Ski ball still? Ski ball? I don't remember what it was called on the ship. I We love it so much. I've actually thought about getting one for the house. I'm going to just put it out in the garage. Buy, or clear out the family room. Hell, we never use it anyway. Clear all the furniture out of the family room. Put it in there. We have so much fun playing that. I waste a ton of money on the ski ball one and we always get tickets we never cash them in i always forget but we love doing that so that's a big that's a big entertainment feature for my son and i indoors now he and i tend to do a lot more outdoors on a cruise ship outdoors you have your typical cruise ship layout you know a main central pool 